Hi guys, it's another beautiful day and welcome back to my channel. Is there another third shifter with me waking up at 3 p.m.? Coffee cheers to you. By the way, coffee, well coffee grounds, is what I've been using in my garden. Um, how? Well, here's how. It's been a question of what it actually does to your garden and what coffee grounds are beneficial for. Some people say it's too acidic, don't put it. Some people say it's good just for compost, for your warms. Um, what I found that coffee did for my tomatoes, um, it kind of boosted their growth a little bit. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. I started putting coffee about two weeks ago well, coffee grounds at the bottom of my stalks. And my tomatoes have been doing great, but what I noticed is that it started actually producing more. And it might be a factor of just, you know, time, but, and I do shake these guys, but this little guy here, that was a branch full of flowers like this, but it dried up. And my little suckers, you know, if your plant's healthy, it puts off what people call leaders or suckers. And they are healthy, but my suckers were puny and weak. So as soon as I started putting coffee grounds at the bottom of my tomatoes, my blooms have been forming a little healthier. This little guy has been growing already halfway up the stake. So... The factors could be mixed for sure because I haven't really kept the environment controlled but I think I'm gonna keep doing this and if for nothing else this will just add organic matter to my garden. A lot of people have different theories and different methods. I definitely wanted to look into doing some kind of uh, fertilizer or some kind of just addition to my little garden here because Honestly, all I did is find a pile of composted pine needles, put it right here, and dig up the dirt that was already there, which was pretty much clay, and mix that with the composted pine needles, and I planted the tomatoes in there. So that's all I have. I did not use any special potting mix oil or anything. And I did add another layer of composted pine needles a month and a half ago just I was thinking the nutrients were running out I'm not sure so <laughs> I'm just I'm just going um, discovering things you know so so far so good though I mean that is that's good <laughs> I'm proud of myself let's do a little look around and see what changed so as you can see, the fruits are very visible at this point. So we'll start with the first guy here. At the top, we got a couple of blooms and they all look healthy and good. So I have been shaking them though, just in case. I did see bees here not too long ago, so I'm not too worried about the pollination issue. I got some more baby tomatoes coming over here. Trim this sucker. Some more tomatoes over here. These are good sized tomatoes. Although the, these are pale green. I noticed the less they are in a vine, the paler they are. And then I got this big boy here. They're kind of smashed against this post, but I kept trying to move them and I feel like I'm hurting the plant. So I'm just gonna leave them here. Then we have this guy over here these guys right here they're one of the first ones to pop up and they are definitely weighing the plant down so I can't wait to get this off then this whole branch kind of died on me the blossoms didn't really do good so it's just one tomato on this one 
and then we got two tomatoes on this one and then we got another branch that I did have to pinch off a couple of uh, blossoms here because they were already yellow and dead so I don't know we'll see how these guys do this one's not looking too great either yeah I don't know I don't know some of these tomatoes look like this and then they just don't make it but some make it so we'll see we'll go over here with the big boy so this is my first blushing tomato you can see it's a little bit orangey and this was my first tomato and that came I want to say like three months ago so I've been waiting a lot of time for these to blush and this one is just starting to turn a little yellow orangish I mean it's very hard still so nowhere close to be harvested look at that all of the tomatoes are making it, it looks like, and they've been exposed to full sun for a few hours a day. So I am super happy about that. I mean, look at that. Eight tomatoes on one branch. That's crazy. I love this. And then we keep going, and we got another branch. Three tomatoes here. And then these blossoms I had to chop off because they were all dying anyways. And then we have these blossoms. I mean, more forming, but it'll take time. Then we go to our sucker that was planted not too long ago. I trimmed some bottom leaves off and I think it appreciated it. It's doing pretty good. It's doing pretty good with growth and got some blossoms forming. So I'm looking forward to this one. And this little guy is just puny woony. I did trim him as well, and I, he's strong. He's pretty, uh, pretty strong in there, but I don't know. We'll see what goes on with this guy. In Zone 6A, people have been saying that their tomatoes have been taking a while to blush and uh, get any color on them, and I can relate. I don't know if it's because of my sun exposure, because these tomatoes only get a few hours a day of sun, or it's because not enough nutrients, uh, people say that it's not enough calcium maybe, all kinds of solutions to do with that. Um, one thing I do know is that eggshells are not water soluble, so the eggshells will not deliver calcium to your plants anywhere in the plant lifetime it will deliver calcium eventually into the soil but not anywhere near the plant lifetime so i don't know even is it even worth putting it on the plant or not i'm not sure um but i might have to invest in some kind of fertilizer just organic bought from the store we'll see i'll have to look into that one thing that I am worried about, once these guys start blushing and turning colors, the birds are going to be able to see them. And as you can see, I am surrounded by trees that birds live in. I mean, woodpeckers, blue jays, finches, you name it. I mean, I've seen a lot of birds out here. Um, and to be honest, they have a bird feeder, so I don't blame them that they're here. But I'm worried about my tomatoes because once the birds see them, they will devour them. So one thing I've been seeing is that people put like wet paper towel around their tomatoes so it's white rather than like pinkish red so birds can't really distinctly see it. Um, and your tomato can still ripen on the vine and you just have a wet paper towel just stuck to the tomato. So I think I'm going to try that method and see how that works once I have that issue. But for now, I'm just playing the waiting game. My schooling is going to start here in a little bit and I will be on day shift, um, which makes me kind of sad, but also happy because my body will thank me for sure. <laughs> um, but I'm hoping to get some sun and actually spend some time with these guys and enjoy them. Right now, there's about 60 of you that are following my journey. And, you know, I originally started this as a memory album, but people's support 
really does encourage me and it matters and it feels good. I mean, it does feel good that people understand you, they support you, people that leave comments. I love every single one of you. <laughs> Subscribers, thank you so much for your support. You don't know how much just the count of people matters and people that care. I want to encourage you to support people. Support people that like what you like, that, you know, goes through certain things that you appreciate. Support them and let them know that you're there, that you're watching, that you care. Um, certainly for me that means a lot and I want to thank you guys. Um, thank you for 60 people that are following my journey. That's exciting. That is exciting. <laughs> thank you so much guys. I'll see you in the next one.